title of the sermon that is The South Will Rise Again. Confederate people after the Civil War, which was from 1860 to 65, said and believed that the South will rise again, meaning they would rebuild what was destroyed and start over. In the U.S. and the United States, uh, in the U.S. and Confederate States, about 650,000 people lost their lives during the Civil War. More Americans died than in World War One, which are around 200,000 died then. World War Two, around 400,000. Korea, about 60,000. Vietnam, around 60,000. But that Civil War, a lot of people got killed during that time. Well, around 650,000, that's a, a lot of people. Of course, it was both sides back. I guess that was partially why there's a high mort mortality rate. But look at southern cities and homes today, rebuilt and glowing in prosperity. Men could only look at physical things. The South rising again, you know, they could understand that, but they don't understand the dead rising. God is the one who knows that. How does God look at that statement? The South will rise again. What are God's plans for all dead people? Not only the South, but all dead people. Will they come to life again? How many will then be converted to God's true religion? Hopefully most people will. Some won't or cannot. The choice is simple, eternal life or eternal death. For now, most people have not chosen in this life. God has not called them for now. What about them, people like that don't know God or about His ways? What about them? Will all this evil world, many false religions, save them? No. It will only be through God's love and plan <clears throat> that will save people. So let's look at some things. John 6, 44. John 6, 44. We're going to see how it is that God will save people. Hear Christ speaking. He said, no man can come to me. Of course, we know he's the Savior. We've got to go through him and his sacrifice for us. No man can come to me except the Father, Almighty God, which has sent me, draw him or call him. And I will raise him up at the last day. He'll raise him up at the last day when he returns. That's for the ones that are converted, of course. So let's look at Matthew 13, verse 10 and 11. Matthew 13. Matthew 13, verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, What do you speak unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Now he's telling the disciples, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to them, the others, it is not given. God's truth is hid from them. So we see that God People has got to be called or they will not understand God's ways. They can't because God's got to hid from people. John 5, John 5, beginning in verse 25. John 5, beginning in verse 25. Verily, verily, or surely I say unto you, 
the hour is coming, and now is. Now is because some heard Christ that were dead, they heard Christ call them out of the grave, like the Lazarus. And now is when, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they, they that hear shall live, brought back to life. For as the Father had life in himself, so has he given unto the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. That actually talks about would, there would be three resurrections. First resurrection at Christ's return for the converted. Second resurrection at the end of the thousand year reign. And the third resurrection after the hundred year period of time. But anyway, and they shall come forth, they that have done good, good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation or judgment. So we see that God's going to call everybody, all out of the grave, everybody's going to come up in time when God says. Luke 3, verse 6. Luke 3 and verse 6. Of course, this is continuing on with that thought. He says, here the Bible says, And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Of course, all people are going to come up. The converted will see God's salvation and enter into God's salvation. But some will only come up and get a glimpse of God's salvation, the kingdom of God, that they missed out. And they will be, you know, it's like Christ said, you shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of God, but you yourself thrown out. So all people are going to get to see God's salvation. Some will enter God's salvation. Some will only see that that they missed out on. But they will be the wicked, wicked people that God needs to destroy, you know. Let's look at Philippians 2, verse 10 and 11. Philippians 2, and verse 10. Now here the Bible says, That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things that's possibly the angels and they do bow before Christ and things in earth and things under the earth in the grave you know that are dead and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father we see that you know that God's got plans for all people to come up from the grave Did, did we see or understand God's salvation when we were fleshly minded or unconverted? I, I think not. We followed the many ways of death, love, and sin. When God's call when converted becomes spiritually mind, minded, only then can they begin to see and understand God's salvation. Then, through God, we follow the ways of life. You know, after converting and changing our ways, how will God control and convert the unconverted? You know, for God to, to convert people, He's got to get rid of their false religion, their false ways. So, let's see Matthew 15. Matthew 15. Matthew 15, beginning in thir verse 13, Matthew 15, verse 13. But he answered and said, now this is your Christ speaking. He said, every plant which my heavenly Father 
as not planted shall be rooted up. So, God's going to root them up, you know, whatever needs to be, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. So we see, you know, people that are unconverted, we can't tell them God's truth. They won't have it. But anyway, false religion's got to be taken care of, and God will. Only God can control and change people, and God will when he decides. Let's look at Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37, beginning in verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of midst of the valley that was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold they were very many in the open valley and lo there were they were very dry. So it's this is talking about all the dead people. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. So it's God going to talk to them, you know, and call them up. Then said that, thus said the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will call bread to enter into you, and you shall live. Of course, this is brought back to life. That's all it's talking about. I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. That's when people really starts to begin to comprehend God, you know, is when they brought back to life, you know. That's when they know it, that God is who he is. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. So let's read on over verse 12, begin verse 12. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves, a resurrection, and will cause you to come up out of your graves, and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you out of your graves. And I will put my spirit in you. Remember, that's their converted. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live. And I shall place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. So we see that God's going to resurrect everybody. And it won't be according to their false religion. It will be according to God's true religion and God's true ways. So all worldly false religions fail, for they have an evil founder. Of course, the Bible talks about, we won't turn by, but Revelation 12, verse 9, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3 and 4, and 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13, 15, that talks about why the world is deceived now and who start, started that and keeps it going. Only God and His one true religion and His one true conversion and His Holy Spirit begotten children will be alive forever. Salvation is for few now, most later. Through God, the southern dead and all dead people will rise 